Peach Scone by Hobo Johnson versus E Girls Are Ruining My Life by Corpse <sighs> Husband. <laughs> What's up? You're watching Hive Mind, the most tolerable show on the internet. My name is Rob, and my conniving co-host, Graydon. And today we're deciding once and for all what the worst song of all time is. This is our Worst, worst Songs Ever bracket. bracket. So this is unlike any other bracket we've done. There's gonna be 64 really bad songs, and the song that is worse in each matchup will win until we crown the worst song ever. We've reverse engineered the bracket. Before we even start, comment what you think the worst song of all time is down in the comment section. Before you do it, make sure you like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more, HiveMindTV.com for our merch. We also have a drop over on Cope's website. It's linked in the description, it's on the screen. Also linked in the description is our Patreon and our Cameo if you'd like to support us, or click the Join button here on YouTube and become a member. Thank you, members. Last thing before we start the bracket, today's video is brought to you by our sponsor, AG1. I'll tell you more about them later in the video. Thank you, AG1. Thank you. All right, here's the bracket. First round, we're gonna hear a clip of the songs. After that, we just play it out. Got it. First matchup. We've got Radioactive by Imagine Dragons versus Obsessed by Addison Rae. Wow. <sighs> I mean, it's iconic, but through the lens of like the most boring stadium rock song that's maybe ever existed, and it's pretty obnoxious too. It is, yeah, and this is one you get exposed to whether you want to or not. Yeah, everybody's heard this song. Yeah. It just kind of sounds like a commercial, like a song you would hear on a commercial. I, I just think it's like, it's just that it's Addison Ray. Like if this was anybody else, it'd just be a song that you never heard before. I listened to this song for the first time making this bracket, and what strikes me about it is like the lack of enthusiasm. It doesn't even sound like she wants to be in the studio. She's like, man, I guess me too. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it is so like lazy. Which is crazy because she's such a big music fan. Right. And that's like a meme on Twitter, but like I follow one of her playlists on yeah. Spotify and it's like really good, diverse music taste. So for this to be her her music is like. Yeah, feels like she did it against her will. But Radioactive is worse. And I know I can leave this and never hear Obsessed again. And I'm going to be forced to listen to Radioactive at least 135,000 more times in my life. And talk about it in the second round. So. Yeah, true. All right, here we go. Now we got Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5 versus Prom Queen by Lil Wayne. I got a strong opinion here. I've got the moves, like oh, it, oh it, yeah. it really hurts me. Oh man, it's like yeah. my bones are sitting in vinegar when I hear that. <laughs> There are moments of this song though that musically I kind of like. Yeah, it's produced like it has the right momentum spot. It's produced yeah. like a big pop song. So yeah. it like has its merits. It's got some disco elements. Adam Levine can sing. Of course. Maybe he could take his shirt off if he wants. I mean, he's got that V. What do you call those again? Sex V? What, what's the? Cum gutters. That's right. <laughs> Who calls them that? People in the gutter industry. I don't know. When they refer to the roof, those are roof gutters. Eve's drops. Those? Nice V. Cum gutters. His body is absurd. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you right now. You do not. I like no, this song. No. I like it. I'm sorry. I like it. It's so bad, Riley. Here's what I will say. The producers did him dirty on this one. How did Lil Wayne, the biggest rapper in the world, not have people around him who could produce a rock song correctly? Like a rock song. Yeah. It sounds weird. His voice is mixed low. His, <laughs> his auto-tune sounds bad. But like, if this was not Lil Wayne and you played it for me, I'd be like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> to me, Moves Like Jagger has like musical integrity inside of its bullshit. I hate that run that you hate too, but there's like, it's balanced. It's like a decent song at times and Prom Queen is like unlistenable. I am gonna say that I think Moves Like Jagger is worse. It's more annoying. It hurts my brain. And so I would like Moves Like Jagger to move on and you would like Prom Queen to move yeah, on? I'll All make right. Prom Queen less. Grant, our tiebreaker. I'm gonna take Prom Queen as the worst song. <sighs> All right. You were rooting for moves like Jagger in this? No, just not in like in the long term, but I just think Prom Queen's like good. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Peach Scone by Hobo Johnson versus E Girls Are Ruining My Life by Corpse <sighs> Husband. Is it just platonic, strictly just as friends or the type that ties you two together till tomorrow's end? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, uh, I don't know. This one, like, like I know I said the bone vinegar thing earlier. Yeah. This is like, I'm being electrocuted. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say, it makes me feel like my whole body's cramping. Like I was supposed to be doing something. Like yeah. I'm like, oh, how do I get out of this? Like, <laughs> like, like how, where am I supposed to go? Like I'm like yeah. looking around the room to see how many escape routes there are. Yeah, it's, it's scary. 
stress-inducing music. All of Hobo's music is. No oh. matter when you're listening to this song, it's like he's right in front of you. <laughs> And he's playing his music for you, being like, you like? <laughs> <laughs> like, at the end of this, he literally says, like, I'm really fucking proud of it. Like, he's, like, super proud of this song. I produced the song myself. I'm not a rapper. It's like if Lin-Manuel Miranda was, like, a 25-year-old embarrassing man. And said he's, what, like a 48-year-old embarrassing man? Right. Choke me like you hate me, but you love me. Low-key, wanna date me when you fuck me. <laughs> 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 For me, I'll use this metric. There's other music that sounds like the Corpse Husband song. Not saying I like it. There's just other songs like it. Sure. No one's retreaded the hobo territory. <laughs> yeah, it was like 21 Pilots and La Dispute did versions of that yeah. first. Hobo Johnson boiled it down to all its worst elements and put it right in front of you. <laughs> E Girls Are Hurting My Life is like not that bad. It's cringy. It's but cringy, it's not but like it's like not that bad to listen to. No. The Hobo Johnson song is like, no. No. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no. Now we've got Thirsty by AJR versus Diamonds by Lil Xan. This is kind of a clear cut one for me. This is obvious, yeah. Thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. Yo, yo, That will never get old. That is awesome. <laughs> Yo lay, yo lay, yo I had never heard AJR before. I even tweeted like listening to AJR for the first time because I d I knew that people thought they were bad, but I had never heard it, and I couldn't have imagined it being worse. Like in my head, I was like, oh, it'll be bad, and then I heard this and was like, Wait, what are you thirsty, doing? thirsty, thirst. <laughs> Here's the thing with Lil Xan. Yeah, go right ahead. Broadly, him as an artist is worse than any individual song of his. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I there, you can't saying. pick out, like, this is the worst Lil Xan song. Sure. Like, this one has that annoying ass beat, and he's just doing the same flow. Everybody, like, you know, I'm gonna be when I'm like me. Hey, no, 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 like everybody did that flow at some point in mm -hmm. the SoundCloud era. But like, the song is just kind of like a meh. Yeah, there's plenty of songs in this that I couldn't make it through their entirety. I can listen to all of Diamonds. Yeah. Pretty easily. Yeah, pretty easily. It's yeah. like, doesn't hurt me. Thirsty by AJR, 45 seconds in. I'm ready to pull the trigger. Yeah, totally. <laughs> now we got Mother by Megan Trainer versus Hate My Life by Fury of a Dead Man. I got a hot take here. You listen to me. You just a bum bum bum. Is your hot take that you like that? Yep. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. It's good, right? I like it. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good song. It's fun. It's bubbly. It's, it's got fun. an attitude. Yeah, it's yeah. quippy. It's quirky. It has its little moments. I, I feel like it's actually like a wonderfully produced pop song. Yeah. It's embarrassing. But in the context of listening to this entire bracket, I was kind of like, oh, this fine. one's like fine while it's on. It's fine. You know? Everybody's saying mother this, mother that right now. It's just yeah, like who, timely. You who's know? mother? Right now, mommy is probably Jill Biden. <laughs> Jill Biden? Yes. Who the fuck is Jill? Jill Biden. Jill's wifey. Jill's a uh, second first lady. I thought Eve was the first lady. No. Oh. Mother for me has always and will always be Rachel Ray. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's mother right there. That is. She's serving. She always served. That's like her thing. She yeah. was a cook. Service industry. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> she was just a cook, but you know, she served. That's the service industry. She slayed. So sick of the hobos. Always begging for change. Is that the sound of like a garbage truck in the background at the beginning? <laughs> like why does it have like Foley art in the background? And this is one of the ones I don't know, like is it so steeped in satire that I'm gonna sound stupid if I call this like- Offensive? Yeah. Right. I thought the same thing. I was like, is it making fun of people who hate hobos? Yeah. I don't think it is. I think the funniest thing about it is like, we listened to it, identified that he was like saying a bunch of things that were obviously like wrong mm -hmm. or like at least logically twisted. Right. But the song called Hate My Life. Yeah, he's got road rage. He hates how his wife's always on him. She always wants to buy stuff and he doesn't have the cash. And then he also wants to have sex with her more and she's always tired, which is like a classic old misogynistic trope. Mm -hmm. Sleepy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes me wanna like hope that it's like genius satire, but I can't give that credit without proof. I mean, I think it's got an easy matchup here. It wins over mother, even, yes. like no matter what. Yeah, I don't, so. if it was serious, not serious, doesn't matter. I don't like the tune as much as mother. Yeah. Now we got Emo Girl by Machine Gun Kelly versus Drummer Boy by Justin Bieber. One of these songs is awesome and the other is not. That's the not awesome one to me. But it's just so relatable. Yeah, I'm on the drum, yeah, I'm on the snare drum. Yeah, I'm on the beat, cause the beat goes dumb. And I only spit heat, cause I'm playing for the sun. 
let's donate a can and change the world. Yeah. yeah. It's a Christmas song by Justin Bieber featuring Busta Rhymes and two JB rap verses. Yeah. Now this song is awesome. I love this song. Yeah. Now we got Judgmental C Word by Kid Cudi <laughs> versus A B C D E F U by Gale. Is that actually how the alphabet goes? Yeah. As someone who had never listened all the way through Speed and Bullet to Heaven, I was flabbergasted that this <laughs> song existed. Yeah. And flabbergasted by just like how much Kid Cudi must have been listening to Bleach by Nirvana. Like it sounds so much like he's trying to do Bleach era Kurt Cobain. Yeah. But then he gets into like the screaming, like the. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is bizarre. And I can't believe like he went through with it. Oh yeah, I can't believe it was released. A, B, C, D, E, I kind of like this one, I'm not gonna lie. There's something about it. Well, you and the Grammy committee or whatever, yeah. they nominated this for Song of the Year at the Grammys. I'm a big part of that committee. It's just so corny. These are on opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're both really, really bad. There's just one I can like understand the words and can kind of hear how it would like slip into a Grammy committee trying to do, I don't know, something. They're like, oh, this is what the kids like now. Mm -hmm. Judgmental C word, on the other hand, that, I mean, that's forgotten about as soon as it passes by. You don't understand the words of that one? No. Hey, you. Hey, you. Yeah, no, not coming through any clearer. I'll I'll go with the Kid Cudi song. Yeah, I'll go with the Kid Cudi song. It's a slight win though. Yeah, that one's close. Now we got Earth by Lil Dicky versus Sea Bat by Hudson Mohawk. <laughs> the sex song. We love the earth. This song is, 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 it's bad. Yeah. But it's like a movie, like, it's not like it's a movie, like, oh, this song's right, a movie. No. <laughs> but I mean, like, it's like, sounds like it's supposed to be in like a kid's movie. Right. So I don't know how seriously I'm supposed to take it's badness. That's true. There is a bunch of like horny animal bars and stuff though. So That's I don't true. know like what children's movie you're specifically thinking about. Right. Lil Dicky cannot help himself. No. Nope. That's one thing about him. He makes some really brilliant things, mm -hmm. but he has to force dumb childish humor yeah. into all of it. And <laughs> I, I think he would be better off if, I guess, I don't know, maybe that's true to him or whatever. Yeah, whatever. I, I like it. It's authentic and I love you, Dave Bird. Sorry. <laughs> Quick 180 there. Um, yeah, this song's obnoxious, but it's like, you would hear this like, I always think of the Toledo Zoo when you walk through the tunnel and you heard like the, the play on Call Me Al. I love my zoo. I, I love, love my zoo. Hey, how, how about, about you? you? This one's been kind of ruined by its internet context for me. <laughs> this song's fire. Yeah, I wouldn't like think anything of it, really, if I, it weren't for its moment in the light. Oh, I thought of some, like, I mean, I definitely think of it as very weird. Yeah, it's very weird, but it's just like that era of like Hudson Mohawk shit was just like strange trap beats. Yeah, yeah. Earth is way worse. Yeah, way worse. Now we got Sail by AWOL Nation versus What's New Pussycat by Tom Jones. Awesome matchup. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. All right, I'll say it. Maybe he should have. <laughs> satire. A satire. It's satire. I'm so sick of the Bro. hobos, my ex wife. Maybe the guy from AWOL Nation should have done it. <laughs> you know, it's just classic satire. We said it in another video, but it is insane that this song was playing everywhere. Yes. And just a guy going, maybe I should kill myself. I'm picturing like my poor mother at an Applebee's and she's like whistling along and she doesn't even realize what she's doing. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I'll take another Michelob, thank you. <laughs> is this supposed to be almost like an EDM infused interpolation of old sailor songs? Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. dun, 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 dun. like if you heard that with like a yeah, whistle, it's like a shanty, like old, like, in a shanty thing, yeah. Well, you know, the roots of a lot of popular music come from the Irish traditional folk music of, you know, the 16th, 17th century. I don't care to hear more about that. You sounded like you were excited to talk about it, but yeah. I just don't give a shit that you know about that. Okay. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. He says, he says some 
fucking freaky shit on there. Oh, yeah. He said something about, like, your pussycat lips. Yeah, I want to kiss your pussycat lips. I don't know how it was taken back in the day, but there's really only one way you can take that today. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Like, you wouldn't say that today. It's too stark of an image. I just like that he's, like, falling. In the, whoa, <laughs> he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but it is the really bad. Like, I hate this song. I know you do. I fucking hate this song. I fought for this song to get out of the bracket. I like it so much. But again, it's like showtimey. It kind of fits in like a Broadway scene for me. Sale, like I don't want it to fit anywhere. Mm. Yeah, sale's worse. Yeah. But like, it's close. Before we get to the next one, you want to tell them about our sponsor, AG1? Let's do it. That's right. Today's video is brought to you by... AG1. Brayden, don't you get frustrated taking multiple different vitamins and minerals every single morning? I lose track. There's too many, Riley. That's why I'm so thankful for AG1. They believe giving your body the nutrition it needs should be simple and enjoyable. And that's why they pioneered the category of foundational nutrition. The flagship product, AG1, is a nutritional drink designed to be an effortless daily habit and nutritional cornerstone of your health journey. Making AG1 part of your morning ritual will help cover nutrient gaps in the modern diet, as well as establishing the healthy gut necessary to absorb absorb all those nutrients. Drinking AG1 combines nine health products working together in just one simple scoop. It can replace multivitamin, multimineral, pre and probiotics, immunity support, and more. That means AG1 does more for your body, saving you time, money, and confusion when compared to taking multiple unique products. Just add it to your preferred liquid base, whether that's water, almond milk, coconut water, whatever it is, Shake and enjoy. AG1 solves two of the most important health needs, the nutrients your body needs each day and the foundation of long-term gut health. And gut health is very important to me. As you guys know, I have IBS. Anything I can do to improve my gut, I'm gonna do it. The 75 high quality ingredients help fuel whole body health, impacting everything from sleep, digestion, energy, immunity, to the health of your hair, skin, and nails. You'll be hard pressed to find a more comprehensive supplement on the market. Our viewers can get a kickstart on beginning their health journey. You'll receive a free one year supply of vitamin D3K2 and five free travel packs of AG1. There's no more excuse for putting off your health journey. When you go over to AG1, following the link in our description, you will get a year supply of D3K2 vitamins and five free travel packs of AG1. Get healthy. Thank you, AG1, for sponsoring this video. Let's get back into it. And we're back. We've got <laughs> Temporary Secretary by Sir Paul McCartney versus Mask by Dream. Temporary Secretary, Temporary. I'm astounded every time I hear this song. How did he make something so annoying? He's made some of my favorite songs to, that exist. Everyone's favorite songs. He's trying to infuse it with like synth work and then he just chooses to do that voice, which he's never done before. <laughs> yeah. Temporary yeah. Secretary. <laughs> and also just lyrically, it is weird. Yeah, it's super weird song. He's, he's like talking about how he just needs like a girl for a second. It doesn't matter if she's like a, she could be a diplomat, but I don't need a girl like that. No. She couldn't even have a job. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You know, whatever. <laughs> Let me plug my nose for the hook. Temporary. <gasps> <laughs> In the context of such a great body of work, it does make it worse. Yeah. Everyone else on here is kind of like, well, you tried and you failed. That sucks. Paul McCartney, it seems like a very conscious decision to make and release something so putrid. That's what the point of the matter is so you can see I'm not that bad not that bad it's not that bad of a song it is like i mean it's bland and it's personality lists and whatever melody wise it's fine sure it's corny but like at least it's there you know that's the point of the mask yeah that's what the point of the mask is yeah you get it it's like you you leave that song with something Right, yeah. You leave temporary secretary with like a frontal lobe migraine. Absolutely. <laughs> temporary. <laughs> now we've got hashtag selfie by the chain smokers versus East by Earl Sweatshirt, which you guys voted in. Yeah. That's all we I'm did gonna not say. Choose. We didn't choose that one. You guys voted it in as a bad song. But first, let me take a selfie. <laughs> That first time Molly rolls coming back. <laughs> Dude, I mean, this one sucks because of like the talking part and right. blah, 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 and what it's about. It's like, oh, let's take a selfie. It's like, un it kind of like epitomized that whole era of where you have like a talking part that goes into a big yeah. dubstep drop. But like, this kind of goes off. Yeah, I mean, it slaps. The Chainsmokers can make big hitting EDM music. Yeah, that's what they do. But it is cornball and like mm. stuck in its time. It's literally hashtag selfie too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Even trying to think of a time where selfies were sweeping the nation feels like 
thinking about World War II or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely kind of better than World War II, though. We can agree on that, right? World War II was good. We, we won. Well, yeah, but there's... Nah, I don't know. We didn't know. win the battle against selfies. We're still kind of stuck <laughs> fighting that one. At least World War II's wrapped up tight little bow on it. Yeah. Two tight little bows. Followers, it's like me. I lost my phone and consequently all the fillers I call for my DF. My hand. Good song. Yeah, nothing wrong with that song. Yeah, I actually, it's actually very good. I can understand how the beat can sound annoying to some people. Here's what I will say. I do like that song, but if I was locked in solitary confinement and they played that song for me, it's one of the ones that would wear on me the fastest because it is so back and forth. I think it would drive me insane. Yeah. But for now, it doesn't drive me insane because I'm normal. And you're not locked up. Not even mentally locked up and I'm normal and I'm fine. I'm doing good. Right. Nobody's worried about me. Insanity wise. Insanity wise, I'm good even, on that scale. I'm not even like close to the. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's selfie. Selfie's moving on. Who's that? That is no one. There's no one over there. You sure you don't see a guy over there? Well, he's dancing. No. No? I don't. Word. I'm good. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, let's do the selfie. Yeah, selfie. Oh, we got Everywhere I Go by Hollywood Undead versus Magic by B.O.B. Featuring Rivers Cuomo of Weezer. <laughs> Bitches always know the Charlie scene has got a weenie that he loves to show. Snuck in late. We were reminded of this song as we had a 64 and we had to make yeah. some changes to accommodate for this song to be here. And I mean, you talk about sea shanties as you were earlier. Yeah, totally. This is totally slapping thighs on a boat deck. <laughs> it's like a, a sea shanty mixed with Remember the Titans. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go, people want to know, people want to know who we are, who we are, so we tell them, so we tell them, we are the hive mind, mind. We I'm glad you added that part. I've got the magic, baby. <laughs> this is the most annoying song on the bracket for me. <laughs> really? I, I, I mean it. And I, I'll give a caveat. If it weren't for this matchup, I think Everywhere I Go is like a worse song. But Magic by B.O.B., that's like my worst nightmare. It is very overtly happy. Oh my God. And I don't usually like overtly happy music. And I'm not saying I love this song. <laughs> oh yeah. But I'm saying I get it. It's a catchy hook. I think that's what makes it so bad for me. Like it is truly annoying that like, if I walk by this song, it's playing in somewhere. I don't even go in there. I'm stuck with that song for three days. Yeah, that's true. That doesn't make it good. It makes it like the worst thing for me. It's like a little trap. I don't know. There's like a version of this song that could exist that I would like. With B.O.B. and Rivers? No, it's got to be one or the other. Yeah. I mean, I think Everywhere I Go is a worse song. It is, yeah. yeah. I just had to say my two cents about magic being so obnoxious. All right, now we got an old one. Achy Breaky Heart by Billy Ray Cyrus versus Freaks by Broken Side. Don't tell my heart, my achy breaky heart. I just don't think you'd understand. I love it. You love this song? I love that song. Really? Square dance, honky tonk, or roll around the straw bale, you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's like so many better country songs. Like this sure. one's bad. It is a bad country song, but there are worse country songs on this bracket. Well, that's true. More problematic country songs for sure. Absolutely. And this is just like, it's such a basic, you know, kind of four on the floor, square dancing. It is like everything about country music boiled down to just like the amusement park version of it, you know? Yeah. Let's get parking freaky now. Yeah! I got a confession to make. This is the first song I ever made out to. <laughs> Are you serious? 100%. Oh my God. 100% real. Real oh, facts. Oh man. Real facts. Shout out to Aaron. We Shout made out, Aaron. out at her friend Kelsey's house. Yeah. Upstairs. Put this song on. Got to it. This is just such a hard time. Having lived through it, this is such a hard time to recontextualize. How did this happen? Oh, uh, because people wanted to dance and people liked screamo music. I don't know. This song's fucking awesome. <laughs> It's fucking sick. I don't know. It's just, this is, there are other songs from this era in here that are the most complex things for me to understand. Yeah, well, this one I like a lot and I don't like Achy Breaky Heart, so I want Achy Breaky Heart to move on. I go Freaks. I'm taking Freaks. What the hell? For sure. It's insane. <laughs> All right, now we got Soul Train by YBN Namir versus My First Kiss by 303 featuring Kesha. <laughs> If I gave you all my love, I say, would that make you happy, baby? Would that make you happy? Great song. 
<laughs> at least a great idea for a song. I agree. I think that if somebody else had performed this song, we'd have a nice song yeah, on our Yeah, it'd be hands. a good hit. But he just can't. <laughs> he, just, he can't. He can't sing. He doesn't no. understand how to structure the song either. Like, There's a core good song there. Didn't end up being good, but it could have. Right. My first kiss went a little like this. And twist. And twist. My first kiss went a little bit like Freaks by Brian. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Not a little bit. Exactly, exactly like, like it. Actually, yeah. In terms of 303 songs, this is the best. That hook is really obnoxious. Yeah. But like in terms of like trashy pop music from that era, yeah. they did it the best. Yeah, but I don't want to say Soul Train's worse. It is actually. It's worse. Soul Train's worse than this yeah. song. Yeah. Now we got Unholy by Sam Smith featuring Kim Petras versus Barbie Girl by Aqua. Are they interpolating something here? Why have I heard that melody? It's so like epic. <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like I heard it like in church or something. <laughs> I, th I thought like a video game trailer or yeah. something like da 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 yeah, but it it falls in the same vein as like sale for me. It's like unwarranted magnitude of it yeah, or something yeah, yeah, where yeah. it's just like it didn't earn that atmosphere. I'm like yeah. Jesus Christ! Like, <laughs> yeah, no, tone it down a little bit. You're yeah. screaming at me like a choir of <laughs> angels, like archangels, like is. I mean, that song is like annoying. It's like classic annoying, another yeah. like torture technique song. It's like one of those where it's like, you hear it twice, you're stuck with it for a long time yeah. and it will like rot your brain over time. Like this is like a um, pixie stick. Yeah, just a pile of sugar. Yeah, it's a big pile of sugar. <laughs> and it's got that early 2000s dance beat to it. Like there are things inside of this I like way more than Unholy. Yeah, Unholy's worse. Yeah, Unholy's bad. Now we got White Boy by Tom McDonald versus Big Bang Theory theme song by the Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> White Boy! Wait a minute. That song's literally about me. <laughs> oh God, here we go. Yeah, I don't, listen to the, oh God. Bro! Go. Did you listen to the verses on this song? I really hope this isn't about you. Yeah, me too. I had never heard this song all the way through until I was astounded by the stuff that he says. Yeah. It might not get enough hate. This song might be yeah. worse than people <laughs> give it credit for. Like this is a really fucked up song to make. Pandering doesn't do it justice. Oh no, he implies the N word. That's insane. Like it was just, this is a. Uh, this is almost like, I wish that this was in a separate bracket about yeah. like worst content in a song yeah. because like it should just like win the whole thing <laughs> because there's nothing defensible about this. No, this is being like a songs that should warrant crimes. Yeah, like songs people should be locked up for. Yeah. yeah. Math, science, history, unraveling the mystery that all started with a big bang. Here's what I will say. The only song in the bracket that is always immediately followed by something worse. An episode of The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> The theme song is the best part of that show. Yeah. <laughs> Bare Naked Ladies rock. They do. This song is, I get why Sucks. people hate it. It does suck. It's nerd like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> no one wants to, who cares? It's a joke, but I mean, White Boy is obviously worse. Yeah, for the first time on this channel, we can say Tom McDonald here, take a W. Tom McDonald gets a W. <laughs> it, it moves on. Yeah. Good win, Tom. You won. Second side. Let's go. Friday by Rebecca Black versus Country Girl by Luke Bryan. Sounds like my DJ set. <laughs> yeah. I always blend these two. I love that transition. Yeah. Dare I say, maybe inspired by Paul McCartney's delivery on Temporary Secretary. <laughs> yeah, very nasally. <laughs> but she was like 13. Right. You know? I, I can see why people hate this song, but I do not. Yeah, no, it was just a moment. Like, it is bad. Like, it was funny because it's bad, but it's like a 13 year old making a pop song. So, like, what do you expect? And she's awesome now. Yeah, Rebecca Black's great. Country girl, shake it for me, girl, shake it for me, girl. Do country girls even, like, I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? I'm always picturing, like, a room full of Daisy Dukes and white girls failing at twerking. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> in flannels, and yeah. they're like, they're like, ha <laughs> you know? This is like they're shaking <laughs> it. For a second. Here I know? go shaking it for you, Luke. <laughs> I would shake it for Luke. That's what they're saying, right. not me. This song sucks. Yeah, this song really does suck. I hate it. it easily beats Friday. Easily. Now we've got Angelic to the Core by Corey Feldman versus Galway Girl by Ed Sheeran. Millennial, you think you got 
What happened here? I don't really know the whole story. I don't. I, I just know he there was an actor and then he made this album and people say it's the worst album ever made. I'm sensitive to go too far in on it because like, did he lose his fucking mind? <laughs> like, I don't want, I don't want to be like, this sucks so bad because this sounds like the ramblings of a lunatic. Yeah, yeah. The like minute and a half intro, him talking to like Charlie's Angels. And it's and like about space kind of or something. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't really know. I don't know what's going on with this, I'd have to do like research. And I know there's a lot of like Fantano fans out there who know what happened here. But to me, all I was, I was just kind of like viscerally like, wow. Disturbed, honestly. Yeah, it's disturbing. Goodbye the hands of baby, I just wanna dance with my pretty little girl. Galway, like he meets a girl from Ireland and yeah. that's somehow an issue because he's from England. <laughs> he fell in love with an English man. I believe this is a cover too. This is a cover? I think. I don't know if he wrote this song. I know he raps on the verses though. He sure does. We had to pick an Ed Sheeran rap song we did. to be in here. It just kind of feels like the average missteps of Ed. Yeah, like the hook, it's catchy, he sings well, it's yeah. like whatever. It's just like, why would you put this on? Yeah, I don't want to hear him ever try and rap, but it's no, Corey Feldman is like on another planet. <laughs> like that is, that one's going to be tough to take out of this bracket, I think. Angelic to the core yes. wins easily here though. All right, now we've got She Keeps Me Up by Nickelback versus Pump Rock X Heavy Metal by Lil Pump. <laughs> I'm usually like, I'm a Nickelback defender. Yeah, not in this case. This is their worst song and it is hilarious. Like what the <laughs> fuck? This is like a disco Nickelback song. It's so bad. Yeah, but it's like the vocals remain gruff and like, but rock like and it's so weird dude yeah the lyrics are ridiculous <laughs> he does say one line in here that i like caught on like my third listen through that i thought was actually kind of clever everybody knows where she's been because you can see it on everyone's faces oh and the song's about coke and it's about cocaine and it's like everyone's faces being like yeah. dollar bills and everybody knows where she's been because uh. you see it on everyone's faces. I was like, okay. Or like having remnants on your face. Yeah, I see it more as like everyone's yeah. faces because of dollars, because that's where you think that's, everybody knows where she's been. Right. Because that's where cocaine has been is like in strippers butt cracks. That's what usually people talk about. It's yeah. like, don't use that one. Like you have to use a hundred because yeah. every $1 bill has been in up a stripper's asshole yeah. or whatever. Pop rock shit, slit my wrist, slit fuck that bitch, oh, drop top whips. Better than prom queen. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, yes, it's well, not. Yeah, it is. No. It's this hardcore. Is like, it's badass. <laughs> <laughs> it is ridiculous that he just shifted his lyrical content to be the exact same in like a completely different genre. It's so bad. To me, it sounded like he had a lot of fun making it. I bet he did. You and know? I'm sure if he played it at a show, everybody would be like, haha, this is awesome. Yeah. I'd take the Kid Cudi song over this song. There's just more of an entertainment element when I'm listening to Lil Pump do a punk thing. Yeah, I like the Nickelback song more. I mean, it's probably a better song. Yeah. I would take Pump Rock. Okay. Happy ending by Hot Hobson versus We Built This City by Starship. We just move Hobson along. It's obviously worse. Yeah, but let's just hear yeah, them. I guess. We'll if hear we them. have to. Okay. Are we allowed to play that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. It is definitively racist. It's it the most racist shit I've probably ever listened to. <laughs> One of them, yeah, it's up there. Awful, really, really bad. If we had any criticisms for Eminem doing accents on our Eminem bracket, this is different. <laughs> well, that's my criticism for Eminem doing that. He opened the doorway for Hobson to do this. <laughs> I've always kind of liked this song. It's so theatrical, it's timely, it feels like, I don't know, I'm seeing like the kids running through the streets, like people joining in. Rock and roll, we built this city. <laughs> yeah, it is, it's not that bad. I know but yeah. like old people will always be like, that's the war, that's such an annoying song. And in know? listening to it, I can hear how it is like the boiled down elements of music of that time. And it does just feel like a cheap representation of that. And to have this grand proclamation as the hook, like we built this city on rock and roll. It's like, shut the hell up, starship. Yeah. You didn't build <laughs> shit and this isn't even rock and roll. <laughs> totally fair, but it's kind of a fun song to listen to. Happy ending wins. We don't have to talk about this anymore. Now we got Hot Shower by Chance the Rapper versus Summer Girls by LFO, which is a song that I feel like a lot of people who watch us have not even heard. Yeah. Summer Girls by LFO, so strap in, you know. Hot damn hot water, hot shower. Hot Atlanta smoking green cauliflower. I did an experiment with this song. 
I started it mm-hmm. at Made in Tokyo's verse yeah. and played it till the end. Pretty good song. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Chance the Rapper's part is the part that makes this so bad. Yeah, like, he ruins it. His delivery is obnoxious. Mm-hmm. It's on that terrible album he made, but like he did the no melody beat thing that everybody was doing at the time, which started mostly in Texas. I feel yeah. like people were doing that. Made in Tokyo does a cool little verse on it. And, and DaBaby floats. DaBaby, yeah. That was a time where DaBaby was good at music for a second. Yeah. So I don't mind this song once you get rid of the first part. I agree. And I think it was like so rough on the palate initially. I heard the song on that album, hated the whole album. Everybody kind of jumped on this song. Easy to pile on, but now being a couple years removed from it, it's not the worst song ever. No, not at all. I like girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I take her if I had one wish. People that are like 36, 34. (laughs) They love this song. They love this song. (laughs) This was all over the radio. And I feel like when you just heard that little clip, yes, it sounds like that. It is produced like, it's produced like garbage. Yeah. I can't believe how bad it sounds and how big it was. Some things just can't be explained. Chinese food makes me sick. That's one of the lines. (laughs) Yeah, it is. It is just a strange anomaly of a song. And even after all the things we said about Hot Shower, It's worse. It is worse. Yeah, absolutely. All right, now we got Crazy Bitch by Buck Cherry versus Go All The Way by Quavo, which we put in here because we had to. Yes. And you guys will not believe what this song sounds like. (laughs) Y'all crazy bitch, but you so good I'm on top of it when I dream. Buck Cherry, man. (sighs) This is top tier annoying. This is like also kind of top tier (laughs) in general. (laughs) <laughs> it's fucked up. Like, like the lyrics are ridiculous. It's like aggressively like misogynistic and gross. It's grimy. It's yeah. aggressively grimy, but I kind of love the momentum of it. It just got like, <laughs> hey, you're a crazy bitch, but you fuck so good on all that movie. Yeah, it's one of those ones I have a hard time making it through the whole thing, though. Oh, not me. Knock it out. Wave Obot. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Madonna song. It is. It's yeah. got like Quavo <laughs> on it. Yeah. He's like, da, 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 no, no cap. cap. <laughs> of all the phrases you could say in the robot voice on a techno song like that, no cap is the funniest. He optimized the, the humor here and he, I don't think he even knew he did it. No cap. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> they're probably in the studio <laughs> like, that's hard, Quay. That's hard, man. It's just amazing. I love it so much. I oh, enjoy man. listening to that song quite. I enjoy it based on like what we have built together about <laughs> the, that robot. Song. the robot, the robot. robotics, <laughs> and, the, and the no, no cap. cap, like just like kind of did it, did it, did it, did it, no cap. But it's that pacing, it's that kind of call and response action. It's it's good. Crazy bitch is better yeah. for me. A better song yeah, for me. Yeah. What? Uh huh. No, crazy bitch is worse. Grant, I'll take the Quavo song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, now we got "Don't Tell Me How to Live" by Kid Rock featuring somebody who sings on it, and "Twinkle Twinkle." by Leah Kate. Mm -hmm. We all know Leah Kate. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't nobody gonna tell me how to live. This song, okay. First two verses, trying to be offensive, spitting in the face of like the libs. Mm -hmm. Even at one point says like another offended millennial or something, which is hilarious to me because millennials are like 35. (laughs) (laughs) But regardless, the last little section where he's just rapping is fire. (laughs) And Rock goes, you're like Millie Vanilli, a little silly and shit. I'm like shotgun Willie, I'm smoking fillies and shit. I was like, yo, I was like, Detroit till I die. There are people I know that are like so conservative that despite having good music tastes, like past music, they will still like whatever Kid Rock puts out now. You know what I mean? Yeah, they'll totally. Type, yeah. They'll just ride for Kid Rock and they'll be like, that's real rock and roll. And I'm like, how do you like Led Zeppelin and like, you know, all the classics, but your viewpoint now has just all you can like is Kid Rock. <laughs> yeah. Everybody over the age of 40 in Detroit has a story about how they met Kid Rock on a boat. Everyone. I'm not joking. I have not met a single person in Detroit who has not met Kid Rock on a boat. Raft off, Jobby Nooner, 2005. You had to be there. Rock pulled up in a fucking yacht, bro. <laughs>
This is what people who've never listened to Olivia Rodrigo think her music sounds yeah, like. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very Gen Z, very like bratty TikTok language of like just another narcissist yeah. interpolating a classic children's song. Mm -hmm. Whole thing. But like, this is the worst version of that. Yeah. Is it that bad to listen to? I don't know. I get more enjoyment out of the Kid Rock song because it's offensive and ridiculous and it's funny to hear. Yeah. So that's kind of like the toughest part is like, I do, which one do I think is a worse song? The Kid Rock one. But which one do I? I enjoy listening to more the Kid, the Kid Rock, Rock one. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. yeah I, get, I think maybe the the thing that's going to push Twinkle Twinkle for me over is the use of an old lullaby. Twinkle Twinkle wins, I think. I think yeah. so. I think it has to move on. Now we got Astronaut in the Ocean by Mask Wolf versus Red Light, Green Light by DaBaby. What you know about rolling down in the deep when your brain goes... Do you remember the part in the verse of this song where he says, like, I rock with G-O-D? Don't rock with T-H-O-T. -T. No. Yeah, he said he loves God and he doesn't like thought. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if those are the exact words, but he definitely spells out G-O-D, and then right away it spells out T-H-O-T. <laughs> it's like usually God and the devil are raging inside right. you, but then for him it's God and Fox. Yeah. Hey, Mask Wolf is awesome, <laughs> and this song, honestly, this song's only grown on me over time. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Red light, green light, boom. I'm fucking the bitch in my g nice. Go. I hop out with that stick with that beat like my partner won't see something. This beat is infuriating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Do something else. <laughs> There's no tonic. Oh, oh. Like, I know the memes, the Flying Dutchman shit, whatever. <laughs> I was like, you guys are overreacting. But like, listening to it now, it's just how repetitive it yes. is. <laughs> it's going to lose my mind. Like, yeah. uh. It is worse than Astronaut in the Ocean for me. Yeah. I guess. I don't know. I don't even care about that. Yeah. Let's go with the baby song. It's worse. <laughs> Astronaut yeah. in the Ocean's like sick. <laughs> It is, it is sick. <laughs> now we got Dance Monkey by Tones and I versus Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. Which is, why is this song even in here? I know. Ah, whatever, we'll go. Dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, oh, oh. I never see anybody do I want to meet her vocal coach. Yeah. <laughs> like, who taught her to do this? It's like a little guy who smokes a bunch of cigarettes. He's like, dance me, sing like this. <laughs> the fact that it sounds like this and it's a top five most streamed song of all time is truly unbelievable. Yeah, the size of the song somehow ends up making it worse when I know so many people out there like it. Yeah, I don't know how you guys like it. All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. I sit back with my brand new invention. Something. That song's not even bad. Culturally, I guess it had its moment of like mm -hmm. people were hating on it and blah, blah, blah. But like when you listen to it, it's like, it's just another song. It's fine. Yeah, and it's a cool sample. And Vanilla Ice got it all the hate he probably deserved for yeah. a lifetime. I'm not gonna perpetuate it anymore. Dance Monkey. All right, now we got Shake It Off by Taylor Swift versus Good Girls Go Bad by Cobra Starship. You could have been getting down to this sick beat. My we were debating on what Taylor Swift song should be in here because she kind of has to be here. Yeah. She's made some songs that I love, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She's made sure. albums that I love. But she gets she gets in her corny bag. She gets she gets there. You know? uh, yeah. And this is one being subjected to so many times over the years. I've just kind of told myself I hate it. But right. now listening to this playlist over the past couple of days. It's a breath of fresh air. I kind of like it. No, I love this song. I, I just hate the like rap it. verse. I hate the verse at the end. I guess I do too, but she does hit a vocal run coming out of it that is reminiscent of, dare I say, Mariah Carey. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Taylor Swift can sing. She runs out of that verse and goes, Aah! <laughs> and I was like, damn. Yeah. She has some vocal stylings on the song that make it really redeemable and almost make the other parts charming. I hey, I love seeing this. I like seeing you break down into a Swifty. I mean, that's sick. I can't, yeah, I can't. You're gonna love the rest of her catalog, you know, uh, yeah, if you like I that know. song. I'm excited <laughs> to change my whole personality. I'm really excited for that. I'll make some good girls as far as like the trashy pop that I was talking about, that era, yeah. this is one of my least favorites only because it doesn't go far enough. Yeah. It's just like bland and blah, 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 blah. Cobra Starship for sure. Yeah, that definitely moves on. Also, what the fuck kind of name is Cobra Starship? It's kind of badass. Yeah, I guess it is kind of <laughs> cool. It's like snakes on a plane, but instead it's a rocket. Yes. Don't Trust Me by 303 versus Accidental Racist by Brad Paisley featuring LL Cool J. <laughs> Shut your lips, do the Helen Keller, and talk with your hips. I said. I mean, if we gave other songs flack for being offensive, should we? For the, I mean, yeah, this is offensive, of okay. course. Yeah, that's what makes it bad. Other than that, it's a great song. It's <laughs> awesome. Awesome as shit, actually. Yeah. Has the vegetarian bar, you know. Yeah. I'm a vegetarian, and I'm, I'm not fucking scared, scared of him. him. She wanna touch me, woo, -hoo. she wanna. <laughs> 
Th- this song is kind of fire. It is. Like it is. Like when it comes on, I'm like, all right, let's go. Yeah. I'm not gonna sit there and criticize it. Like in the club, I'll say I'll criticize it here on YouTube, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> just the Helen Keller line really makes it stick out. At least there's no screaming on it. I'm just a white man coming to you from the south. Oh boy. Uh, this one can win just on cringe alone. I feel like we have to explain it to people. Yes. I think it came out in like 2014 or something. Yeah. And this is Brad Paisley doing a traditional country song with a verse from LL Cool J where he's talking about wearing and flying of the Confederate flag yes. being a part of Southern culture and specifically country music. Mm-hmm. Here he's saying that he's wearing a Leonard Skinner shirt and it's got the Confederate flag on it and he like, the flag doesn't mean what he you think it means. It means he's a Skinner fan and blah, blah, blah. You know, expressing a lot of uh, guilt yeah. and trying to say that he's coming from a good place. Yeah. It, it seems like it even, dare I say, had good intentions. For sure. But then LL Cool J does a verse too where he compares the flying of the Confederate flag to wearing a do-rag and saying that somehow, like, if you don't judge me for wearing a do-rag, I won't judge you for flying the Confederate flag, (laughs) which is just insane. Yeah. And are not the same thing, even a little bit. No. So. It's like a guy with waves beat my mom up once. Do you know what that (laughs) do-rag means to me? (laughs) Little do you know. It's a a really bad and misguided song. Yeah, it's a misplaced sentiment, which we see so often in country music specifically. It's also like taking on the weight of like, we're about to squash this timeless beef. Me and you, Ella. <laughs> Brad's sitting in there and he's like, I'm glad we got together to do this today. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's over. Regardless of how this song sounds, it's misguided attempt, I feel like, moves it on. Oh, easily. Yeah, it's way worse. All right, now we got Drunken Hot Girls by Kanye West versus Joker by Dax. Mm, I, uh, this matchup, classic. She do too much bullshit just to mess with me. Drunk kind of his temporary secretary moment. This is a heavy handed sample of kraut rock band Can. Right. And it sounds exactly like the, the Can song that it that it samples. But I mean, yeah, it sounds like it's not a great song to listen to right. at all. But it's the lyrics are like problematic. Like yeah. that's like the reason people hate this song the most. And just like, why is it on graduation? It sounds like nothing else on graduation at all. Yeah. I'm an asshole. I forgot that I'm a villain. I forgot that I've always spread positivity, but you think I didn't. This is like one of the worst songs I've ever heard with my own ears. (laughs) Anybody doing the Joker thing is bad, but this one specifically, oh boy, this is a really, really, really bad song. Yeah, and it's it's so weird. Like you have the ability to rap, Dax does. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Yeah, I do. Well, I know you do do, too. Yeah, as well. Mm -hmm. But this would be like if you drop some insane trash. Oh yeah, I mean, of course. Like like, There's so many people who can rap who make fucking terrible music. We're gonna hear some more of that later. Oh my gosh. It's definitely a genre of the worst songs ever, of like someone who is nasty at rapping and just chose the wrong way. Yeah, like they can do the fast driving thing, but oh my God, they got some bad opinions. Yeah. <laughs> it's easily Joker, right? I think so. Yeah. Now we got High Hopes by Panic at the Disco versus Tone Deaf by Eminem. Both Tone Deaf tunes. Pete Judge. This song is uh, highly annoying. Holy shit. Yeah. Very annoying song. I'm Tone Deaf. this way I prefer to stay. I'm Tone Deaf. I feel like a lot of you have not heard this song, so let me just tell you, what you just heard happens for four and a half minutes. Yeah. Same beat the whole time, and he's just doing bit, 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 bit. The thing that stands out about it is the intro. Yes. Where he says, I have an ear in function. Ear in function, and, and I, I cunt, cunt finger, finger it out. out. This song is unbearable. It's the hardest one on the bracket to finish for me. It makes High Hopes look like a fucking banger. <laughs> yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we got Mona Lisa by Lil Pump versus All the Things I Hate About You by Huddy. Lil Pump showing up twice on this bracket. It. Good for him. Yeah. Shout out to Mona Lisa. I heard she got the Nina. Yeah, I mean, this song is like comically bad, but also very fun to listen to. Yeah, I mean, there's just something in that like weird childish cadence Pump finds himself in and like makes things work. And you're just amazed that he ever got to the place he got. Yeah. You know, boy, you is stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you need some education. You is stupid. <laughs> Showstopper, a bad liar, homie hopper, drama starter. <laughs> Hunter, hit me up. What's up, Chase? You're welcome on the show anytime. Absolutely. Yeah, we would love to have yeah. Chase, aka Huddy. Sorry, I know you guys know him as just Huddy, but. Um, formerly known as Little Huddy. Formerly, yeah. He would, right here? 
We'd fit great, I think. Yeah. We'd, awesome. we'd move over. Hudster. I don't know. I mean, that song is like, it's bad, but it's like propped up by so much of the industry Something. to make it produced well and sound good and have like a crazy little hit to it. When it drops for that chorus, like, you can't really deny it. It kind of works. It does work a little bit, yeah. <laughs> and like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like that kind of angst. Yeah, that no, I feel that. Handsome angst. Handsome that TikTok angst. Handsome TikTok angst that Huddy so often embodies, like just perfectly. It's like <laughs> drama starter, bad liar, homie hopper. I don't know which one's worse here. I kind of like I both. <laughs> I, I like, think Huddy's worse. It's a narrow margin. No, 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 no. Mona Lisa's worse. Yeah. As a song? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's more fun to listen to, but like here it, it is, it's bad enough that it deserves to move on. You're right. All right, now we got Death to Mumble Rap by Gone and like a bunch of other YouTube rappers versus On the Floor by Ice JJ Fish. Astronauts in space, now kids want to put cats up on their face. All we're trying to be is the best MCs. It's the Death to Mumble Rap. Rest in peace. R.I.P. <laughs> this is the hardest one for me to make it all the way through. I don't think I ever did. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I don't I, think I, I ever did. I'm sorry, that. guys, like everybody that I work with and everything. I know we're supposed to do our research, listen to all. I didn't make it through this one. I don't think I did either. <laughs> yeah, I listened to like the first little part. And then I went to the end and yeah. listened to that. And then I was like, that's enough. It's something about the girl that just makes my head wanna twirl. I mean, this song is like, it's supposed to be bad. That's the whole thing. I Like, it's it's like, that's tough to judge because it's probably the worst song in here. Especially if you show it to like a, like, you know, Tones and Eyes vocal coach. Right. You know, they'd probably be like, yeah, that song's the worst one here because it has no regard for like melody or <laughs> tone or pitch or whatever the, all those other words are. The range that JJ can go through in the matter of just a couple words is astounding. It is amazing that you could be like, sing this bad and really catch a vibe. Like yeah. when that song comes on, I'm like, so yeah. Like I, there's something like it gets you. you yeah, know? it's like absurdist and based and like kind of retains like a niche cool factor about it. Mm. And the death of mumble rap is just like, again, like you're making this big claim. It's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah, it's just such bullshit. No, yeah, it's, it's really, really, really bad. And it's a terrible beat. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done with that song. It's, but we're moving it on. Right. That's why. We're not quite. <laughs> I'm not. That. Yeah, we're not done with it, like talking about it, but I hate it. Last one in the first round, we've got It's Every Day Bro by Jake Paul versus Rick and Morty by Soulja Boy. It's every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. Five mil on YouTube in six months, never done before. Jake Paul rapping about YouTube numbers and like he says like PewDiePie, you're next and stuff. It's just yeah. very hard to stomach. I will say there's a Jake Paul song out there that I do actually really like. Yeah. It's not this one. Yeah, I don't know. This is just like, it's just bad rapping. It's like, why do you ever do it? It's, it's probably gonna. Oh, yeah, it takes the wind out of my sails to even it talk does, about yeah. a song like this, you know what I mean? Everybody knows it's bad. Morning, Ricky Morning, yeah, Ricky Morning. Rick and Morty, Rick, 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 Rick. Crazy that Rick and Morty is more canceled than Jake Paul. Who would have guessed that like a year ago, you know? No, not I. Not I. Also, why is this like a Draco the Ruler beat? <laughs> right, I love this beat. <laughs> yeah, this beat is it's hard. hard. It's like West Coast. The glass breaking, that little <laughs> slithering bass line. It literally I... sounds like Big Bank Uchis. Yeah. Like Big Bank Uchis, Uchis on, on the dashboard, dashboard that part. <laughs> <laughs> Soldier Boy's a legend and Jake Paul's it sucks. Yeah, let's do the Jake Paul song wins. All right, on to the second round. First one, we got Radioactive by Imagine Dragons versus Prom Queen by Lil Wayne. I'm voting for Radioactive. I mean, I am too. Okay. Yeah. We can leave Prom Queen in the distance. Yes. I'm glad it made it out of the first round, but Radioactive is... Radioactive. Yeah. This is... On, this is insane. This is that final this, four match. This up. is like, this could be the final matchup of the entire bracket. It's in the second round. Yeah. Peach Scone by Hobo Johnson versus Thirsty by AJR. As a song, it's Peach Scone for me. Just because it's like that cramped up nervous energy and like, all right, I don't like the fact they did the yodeling, but at least yodeling is like something musical I've heard before. And I don't have a reference for what Hobo Johnson tried to do on Peach Scone. This is like very difficult for me because Thirsty by AJR is like maybe the worst song of all time. Like in my head, that's yeah. what I think of. But right now I would much rather listen to Thirsty by AJR than Same. have to sit through the rest of Peach Scone. Same. Peach Scone is so bad that I don't even think it deserves to move on, but that's what this is about. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's tough because I'm like, Thirsty by AJR deserves the praise of like one of the worst songs ever made. And Peach Scone, I don't even want to talk about it, but that's because it's just it's worse. That bad. It's that bad. <laughs> and that's the logic we got to let guide us. Hate My Life by Theory of a Dead Man versus Emo Girl. Let's be honest. It's Emo Girl. No. 
Really? Hate My Life is way worse to me. Emo Girl's listenable. Willow's on that song. That's it's true. Catchy. It's catchy. It's not is... even the worst MGK song. Theory of a Dead Man, this song is like, so sick of the hobos. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to leave it to Grant. I'm like on the fence here. I still think Emo Girl's a terrible song. I'll take Hate My Life. All right. <laughs> Judgmental C Word by Kid Cudi versus Earth by Lil Dicky. Pretty easily Kid Cudi here. Yeah, I think so. I think the Kid Cudi song is musically so much worse. Yeah, Lil Dicky <laughs> did like a We Are the World kind of attempt here but with yeah. horny animals yeah totally and that's like at least fun now we got sale by a wall nation versus temporary secretary i can't believe sales going out this early but it is temporary secretary hand over hand over hand over fist Temporary <laughs> secretary. <laughs> Hashtag selfie by the chain smokers versus everywhere I go by Hollywood Undead. It's everywhere I go for me. The whole like yeah. rap core shit is just putrid to me. I mean, this is, I like selfie by the chain smokers. And yes, I said that. You can <laughs> quick clip it. I like that clip song. Clip it. It just goes hard. All right, Freaks by Broken Side versus Soul Train by YBN Namir. I think you're going to disagree with me, but I can't believe Broken Side happened. And I, do, I want an explanation. It's by far the worst song out of these two. Freaks by Broken Side, the thing about it is just that it's a good song. It's I fun know. to listen to. And I know you said that in the first round. <laughs> I'm freaking now. Let's get fucking freaky now. <laughs> and what about Aaron and Kelsey's house and yeah, I you know, my memories and like, you know. That was a lot of lore. Formative experience for me, man. I get it, man. And what was the soundtrack to that? Freaks you by Broken it, Side. You guessed it, by Broken Side. <laughs> yeah. Grant, where are you going on this? I'll take Freaks. <sighs> You guys don't fucking get it. You just gotta listen to your heart. They'll never make a song like that again, and there's good reason for that. Unholy by Sam Smith versus White Boy by Tom McDonald. Do we even have to finish the sentence before we both say White Boy? White Boy. Okay, cool. Here we go. Second side, Country Girl versus Angelic to the Core. I didn't see Country Girl going out this early either, but Angelic to the Core is still, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm allowed to say about it, <laughs> but like, yeah. listen, like, pause the video, go listen to it, right? Yeah, I, I mean, mean, what? There's probably like some sealed documents about that song. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I don't. <laughs> it could be like sleeper code for like spies in other countries. It might, yeah. Like that's how confusing that song is. <laughs> it's very confusing. Angelic to the core too as a phrase is even crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, something. me? I'm angelic to the core. Like, what the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does that mean? You're, you're on Disney Channel. <laughs> Why are you talking to the Charlie's Angels? Why are you their ma maestro? It's so are you like the king of Mars now? I don't know. Techno rock. Uh, pump rock versus happy ending. Happy ending. Yeah, happy ending. I mean, it's just so offensive, you know, that <laughs> it's like, it's like, wow. It's like, wow, it's unbelievable. Okay, hot shower versus go all the way. All right, it's go all the way. It's not. Go all the way is pretty good. Hot I thought we both agreed that hot shower was pretty good. The second half with the two other guys, it Chance the Rapper's part is, it, it's rough. Remember when his, he says that in the middle of a meeting, his wife airdrops him nudes? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> what are you doing? What is Chance the Rapper doing, man? I'll take hot shower. Okay. That's fair. All right. Twinkle Twinkle versus Red Light Green Light. The baby versus Leah Kate. We always knew we'd get that matchup. <laughs> True. I think Twinkle Twinkle's worse. I think Red Light Green Light's worse because of like again just how <laughs> relentless. Oh, it's it's uh yeah. like I'm starting to get flashbacks from like hearing it the whole way through. Like I can't. The moment I hear it like four times, I know that's gonna happen for minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, God, no. God, make it stop. Please, God. Yeah. Twinkle, twinkle, little bitch. Just another narcissist. I can I can handle that. I can't handle. <laughs> You've convinced me. Okay. Red light, green light. And and that's the Squid Game to baby song, right? Yeah. It's, exactly, for, it's yeah. for the Squid Game soundtrack. Yeah. On Mr. They, Beast channel. They ended up not using it. <laughs> Dance Monkey by Tones and I versus Good Girls Go Bad. It's Good Girls Go Bad for me. It's Dance Monkey for me. Handedly. There's a tune in there though that I just like and good girls go bad good girls it has like the robotic Quavo thing without the humor of it being Quavo dance for me dance for me dance for me da, da, da. I hate the melody too you know no uh -uh. Grant, where you go? Dance Monkey. Yeah. Dance Monkey is like a haunted song. Like it shouldn't exist. Accidental Racist versus Joker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joker is the worst song. I think Joker is the worst <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. It this, sucks. The sentiment of Accidental Racist, we, uh, yeah, we disagree uh, with completely, obviously. Yeah. But Joker is way harder to listen to. <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. And I'm not saying I'm cutting Brad Paisley some slack, but I love Skinner too. Tone Deaf by Eminem versus Mona Lisa by Lil Pump. Tone Deaf. Yeah. Oh my God. It needs to be tone deaf versus Joker. So whatever we got to do to get to there, <laughs> that needs to happen. And Mona Lisa, like, it's almost like he's doing like a, uh, like a I Love McConey yeah. song. 
song, you know, now That's, that I think about I it. I just picture I Love McConan singing it, and I like it. Shout out to Mona, Mona Lisa. Lisa. Get to Mumble Rap versus It's Every Day, bro. Fuck. This is kind of tough. Would I rather have a YouTuber who raps about YouTube or a bunch of YouTubers rapping about how rap is bad now? <laughs> the former. Yeah, I'd rather take the Disney Channel flow. Right, because at least that's just like insular. Yeah, Instead and of like, like yeah. attacking the industry that you're not a part of. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Third round, Bitter 16. We've got Radioactive versus Peach Scone. It's Peach Scone. Yeah, we don't even have to really talk about that. Radioactive is an amazing song when it's put up against Hobo Johnson. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It it's is. like, yeah, you're like, wow, flawless, actually. I'm replaying it in my head and I like it. I like a lot of parts about it. <laughs> I'm glad I hear it all the time. I feel it in my bones. Hate my life, judgmental cunt. It's Kid Cudi. Yeah, it's Kid Cudi. Temporary secretary versus everywhere I go. Rapcore versus Paul McCartney's adventure into like outsider synth music. Temporary secretary sucks. If you had to make me listen to one or the other, I'm not listening to Hollywood Undead. Yeah, it's hard to think in this context because like I just hate Paul for making that song so much, but you're right. Like I'd rather listen to the worst Paul McCartney song than really any Hollywood Undead song. Yeah, totally. And the verses aren't that bad on Temporary no, Secretary. No, it's just, it's just like hook. It's just the hook is like, why yeah. did he do that? And we got Freaks by Broken Side versus White Boy by Tom McDonald. Are you gonna sit here and I'm straight face said tell anything. me? You gave me that look. You're gonna I'm sit here and saying. say that Freaks by Broken Side is worse than White Boy? Content wise, no. Obviously, let's get fucking freaky now. I mean, awesome. Thank Love you. Love the sentiment Broken Side went in with there. It is, however, though, the mashing of the styles that make it vomit and puke and poop all mixed together and I have to eat it. It's like the screamo over- How do you think that's so <laughs> gross? Well, exactly. I had to paint the picture for you. It is gross. And that's why I hate the song so much because it is a disgusting mashup of things that should never be mashed together or consumed in the first place. And White Boy? Terrible. I don't like it. But there's no screaming. There is screaming. He goes, why, boy? Why? <laughs> yeah, but not pig squealing. Fine. You would rather listen to White Boy by Tom McDonald than Freaks by Broken Side. That's what you just said. <laughs> Grant. White Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Finally, someone with a goddamn sound mind. <laughs> Angelic to the core versus happy ending. This is a final four matchup. Yeah, right here. Because happy ending, it's just so offensive that it's one of the most offensive songs of all time. <laughs> yes. Angelic to the core, illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to go with Corey Feldman. I, we do, and I don't want to. That doesn't make me a racist. No, it doesn't excuse any. We're not excusing anything that Hobson said no. on this song or the anything about it. It's just that Angelic to the core is just... <laughs> is just hard to listen to. And, <laughs> and I can't make sense of it. The Hobson song, I'm like, okay, this guy's blatantly racist. He's obsessed with his own dick. Yeah. Those things make sense. I've encountered people like that. Corey Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> what happened, Corey? We'll find out next round. Hot shower versus red light, green light. Red light, green light. Yeah, finally. Yeah. It's and the baby's on both of these songs. <laughs> so. Dance monkey versus Dax. It's Joker. I know this one's tough for you, but Joker's way harder to listen to. At least there's like a hook in Dance Monkey. I just oh, I'm just so sick of talking about these like lyrical rap songs that are so misguided and annoying. Yeah. But like Dance Monkey is just the parts that make Dance Monkey such a big song are the parts that make it terrible to me. And the thing about Joker is that it's just kind of like down the middle, bad, annoying. So I'm gonna go with Dance Monkey, Tones and I. That's, I think it's a worse song. I think I just, if I had to sit through one, it's gonna be the one where Dax isn't rapping fast at me. All right, Grant. I'll take Joker. Okay. Tone Deaf by Eminem versus Death to Mumble Rap. You, I know what you want. I know what you want to do. I don't know, it's pretty close. I mean, I think I think Death to Mumble Rap's worse. I think Death to Mumble Rap is worse because these are all the guys trying to be Eminem. And so like when you put it up against actual Eminem, it's like, you know. Yeah, but the tone deaf is kind of the Paul McCartney thing with Eminem. It's like, this is such a terrible song. Like how the fuck did the guy that yeah. they're all copying make this one? Yeah, that is tough. I think this one could go either way. I think what we should do is strategically, I pick one and you pick one yeah. and we give it to Grant because then he can make hard decisions for yeah, us. Yeah, and he'll get blamed for the wrong one or the right one. Totally, I'm yeah. gonna go with tone deaf. I'll go with death to mumble rap. I'll take death to mumble rap. Ah, yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I voted for tone deaf and I really cared about it, obviously. So that's why. All right, elite eight, well, whatever, eight. Eight. <laughs> eight songs. Peach Scone versus Judgmental Cone. <laughs> 
Why do I, I, did I say it that time? I meant C-word. I don't. You I said like to cunt say, last round. I think I did too. I don't know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know whether I'm supposed to say that word or not. My mom says no. Australians say yes. I don't know what's right or wrong, but <laughs> Peach Scone's the worst song. Yes. Not even its toughest matchup so far. No. The AJR song is worse than the Kid Cudi song too. Everywhere I Go by Hollywood Undead versus White Boy by Tom McDonald. White Boy. Yeah, White Boy's worse. I mean, Jesus Christ. Angelic to the Core versus Red Light Green Light. <laughs> this makes Red Light Green Light look like a slap daddy of a Yeah, tail. yeah. This is like, it's like almost as good as High Hopes by Panic at the Disco. <laughs> it's almost, yeah. <laughs> and Joker by Dax versus Death to Mumble Rap. That seems fitting. It does. This one makes sense. And I think Death to Mumble Rap's worse. I go Joker here. I think there's a more potent badness to Joker. Death to Mumble Rap is just like so obvious. Yeah. I mean, they're both obvious in a lot of ways, like doing the Joker aesthetic or doing right. the like Mumble Rap sucks thing. Both obvious to a YouTube audience rapper. But mm -hmm. like, I think Joker is just like funny. Like it's, it's funnier that it happened. Yeah. Like I'm not entertained. <laughs> you make a valid point. I'll go back. I'll, yeah, Joker's worse. All right, final four is set. Here we go. First side, we got White Boy versus White Boy. As offended as I am by White Boy, and rightfully so, I think it's also one of the worst songs on this bracket to mm -hmm. listen to. It doesn't even touch Peach Scone. Like, not even fucking close. Whatever the, you know how good the head massager feels? Whatever the antithesis of that is, that like puts you in that nice, tingly, good state. Yeah. That's what Hobo does to me. It's yeah. like, uh, I guess if you put that thing in my butt. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it would like still open up and clawed its little metal fingers around. I wish you wouldn't say stuff like that, but whatever. It's like a pipe bomb in my urethra? Yeah, see, still. Bad. No. Terrible. Peach scone? Yeah, peach yeah, scone. Okay, cool. <laughs> Angelic to the core versus Joker by Dax. The only thing actually scarier than a real life Joker to me is Corey Feldman in his <laughs> current state. <laughs> Angelic to the core, man. Angelic to the core. We're really here, guys. We really did it. To the final. This is the final right here. There's going to be a poll in the chat. Please vote for which song you think is worse. If you have to, pause it. Listen to both. Someone mash up these two songs, too. A or just get them in the studio. If anybody has both their phone numbers miraculously, I would love to see that happen, you know? Um, so yeah, we got Hobo Johnson, Peach Scone, or Angelic to the Core by Corey Feldman. I am firmly in one corner here, and I don't think we're going to agree. <sighs> I mean, if we're using the which song would I rather listen to metric and then taking the other one, I think I'd rather listen to Angelic to the Core. The value it does bring to the table is insanity. Right, is totally. Is confusion. It's like a theater piece. It's got the skit in it. It's got a sample. It's got all these questions. Hobo Johnson doesn't do any of those for me. It's just like a nails on a chalkboard type scenario, but they are both so putrid. The one thing that Hobo Johnson did as an innovator on this song is take the most embarrassing moment you've ever seen at a party when a guy pulls out an acoustic guitar and starts playing a song for a girl that clearly does not like him. <laughs> if that was like on steroids, he made that a song. Capturing embarrassment in a song and just that pure embarrassment is like one of the most impressive things that I've seen. And it's the song that makes me physically ill the most. I'm going Peach Scone. I think that's the worst song. I think I agree with you. All right, Grant for the record. <sighs> Peach Scone. Yes, okay. we're all in agreement here. Yeah. All right, we agree here. Peach Scone is the worst song of all time. Now listen, there's a lot of bad songs out there. So oh, yeah. please comment what you think should have been included or if there's enough, maybe we do the same 15K like rule. Yeah. 15,000 likes, we'll do this again. There's a lot of bad songs out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We also would like to thank our sponsor for today's video, AG1. AG1. Check the link in our description description. And other than that, make sure you like the video, subscribe, all the stuff I said at the beginning, and great, and please leave these wonderful people with some advice to leave or live their lives back. If you're having too many nightmares, try not to sleep for the rest of your life. Stay awake. <laughs> all right, this has been I, my TV. We love you, appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, bo, oh, bo, oh, bo. Canadian rappers really give me the the heebie-jeebies. Heebie-jeebies. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like it should be offensive? Yeah, I don't know. It's another one. It's kind of like the Scooby-Doo thing we talked about. Yeah. Uh, jinkies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Heebie-jeebies sounds bad. I don't know if it is though. I don't know. I used to do hella jeebies. Gravity bombs. Oh man. Big <laughs> ones. College. <laughs> Ten gallon bucket outside. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah, I love that shit. The Society of Jesus. Yeah. Is magic number 56. Correct. Yeah. 56. Okay. The reverse reduction, of course, is 79. And by reverse reduction, you mean what? It, you wouldn't get it. It's like so you whatever. add 23 to it. I don't. Yeah, it's a reverse reduction. It's like the, doesn't it, seem it's like a like, reduction. It's, just, it's like reading between the lines. It's just about reading between the lines. If the number's getting bigger, it doesn't seem like much of a reduction at all. Were you going to bring up that Jerry Springer was the 56 mayor of Cincinnati and that he died when he was 79? Is that what you're going to bring up? I was kind of thinking about that, right. but I was also thinking about when is my time to offer my soul to the devil. Shout out.
to my pastor. <laughs> he says, I'm a diesel.